What's going on internet? Jossie Joss here and I have a special unboxing for you. So uh, this weekend it was, I don't want to say the first annual LA Comic Con, but it was previously known as Kamikaze. So it's in its like, I want to say like fourth year, something like that. Because I think it started in 2012 or 2011 or something like that. So it's been, a, it's been around for about four or five years. I forget. Um, but yeah, just recently this year, Stan Lee, who owns, you know, the convention, decided to, you know, officially rename it Stan Lee's LA Comic Con. So it has that Comic Con word to it to kind of bring the masses uh, into the LA area for the convention. So um, it, it, it did just that. It, uh, there, were, there were a lot of people in the LA area. Uh, but it also fell on the same weekend that uh, League of Legends, uh, the World Finals happened, was happening, excuse me, at the Staples Center. So there was a ton of people in town for that. And then um, Sunday, so I guess today, tomorrow, whatever, the 30th, uh, is the Rock and Roll Marathon and Half Marathon. So there was a bunch of people in the area picking up all their, you know, like their bibs and all that stuff. Uh, for the race uh, as well and so just in general is the city of LA especially specifically around LA Live and Staples Center and the convention center was just packed uh, parking was terrible from what I heard I took the train up so I didn't have to deal with that so thankfully the metro was reliable uh, and just you know it took me it took me an hour still just to get from uh, the Norwalk Green Line Station all the way up to the Blue Line uh, Pico slash Chick Hearn Station, which is right in front of uh, LA Live and Convention Center and all that stuff. But uh, but yeah, I saved tons of money on that. You know, it's a dollar seventy five up and a dollar seventy five back, so a whopping three fifty, not bad. Um, but anyway, I was able to go to uh, LA Comic Con for a day. Um, I always buy a multi pass, which is the multi day ticket for the convention, just in the case that I am able to go more than one day, but it also just gives me options of which days I want to go. I buy early, uh, so I save money, as opposed to buying day of, because they always, you know, overcharge you in that sense. Uh, so I didn't have to pay that much for my badge, but the prices are going up uh, a significant amount, just because the popularity of the convention is getting bigger and bigger. So, anywho, uh, in regards to the convention, in general, uh, long lines just to get in. Uh, I probably should have arrived a little bit earlier than I did. It took me about an hour and a half to get my badge. Uh, given it was Saturday, which is the busiest day of the convention uh, and the longest day of the convention, so most of the people were there. Um, and it was kind of warm, not terribly warm, but still warm enough where uh, wearing something like this would probably have made my day a lot worse. Um, didn't help that people were continuously complaining behind me, so that was kind of annoying for a good hour, but it's a con. That's kind of a given. If you're not willing to wait in line, it's kind of like, why are you going to Disneyland? You know, you're going to wait in lines if you go to Disneyland. It's kind of a thing. You just got to get used to it. Uh, but I got my badge, and I went in, and the first thing I needed to get was I actually purchased a photo op with Carrie Elwes. So if you guys don't know who Carrie Elwes is, he's a well-known actor. Um, probably most well known for his character Wesley from The Princess Bride. Uh, he's also been in Robin Hood Men in Tights. Uh, he's been in Saw, Twister, uh, what else has he been in? The, the, the Hot Shots movie, which is the Top Gun parody uh, with Charlie Sheen. Um, I think... Uh, that and he, you know he's been in a bunch of different stuff, but the most those are like the mo the things that he's most well known for. And uh, Saturday was the only day he was going to be there, so I you know once once they made the announcement, I jumped on that. I made sure I put, purchased a photo op, um, so I got that. And uh, I was told when I picked up my badge that I had to go inside the the dealer hall. And near the main stage area, there's a booth that was handling all the autographs, you know, if you're wanting to buy another one or, you know, autographs and photo ops, excuse me, if you wanted to buy another one or if you're redeeming one that you had previously bought online, they're going to give you like a ticket that you would use. And then at the designated time, whenever that photo op or autograph session was to occur, you'd basically just go up to the area that was indicated apparently, hand the person running the little booth 
your ticket and then you'd go and you'd either do the picture or you're doing an autograph. Um, so I got in this gigantic line again. Uh, so literally, my, like I literally arrived at convention, arrived at the convention after already being on the train for an hour, waited another hour and a half in line to get my badge just to get in the door. Then I had to get into another line in order to get my photo op ticket. So not even the photo op itself, just the ticket to go to the photo op. The line is about maybe 25 minutes, so it's not terribly long, but it, after waiting for almost two hours in general, just in, I was at that point where I'm like, I just want to be able to enjoy the convention. I can't at this point yet, but I wanted to make sure I got my ticket. So finally get to the front and the lady's like redeeming only because there's a bunch of people who are buying uh, autographs and pictures and stuff. So I go up there, they scan it and they're like, oh, please talk to this lady over here. And she looked kind of like their manager or something. And I was like, oh, that's never a good thing. Um, <laughs> so I get into this, you know, this little pile of people apparently are all in the same situation that I'm in. And they're all talking to this lady and I have no idea what's going on. And basically what happened was I arrived at the convention around 1.30, maybe almost 2 o'clock. So by the time I got into the line for the autographs and the pictures, it's like about 2.15, 2.30-ish, right? I get to this lady who is supposedly like their manager, and I find out that apparently the Carrie Elwes photo op was at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. It was 1 to 1.30. It was a 30-minute thing, 1 to 1.30. Uh, uh, she said it was on the website. The, there was a big group of us that, was, that had basically built up at this point um, that all were in the same boat where they did not claim the ticket or they weren't able to pick up the ticket for the photo op that had no idea about this, that they did not know that the photo op was going to be at, from 1 to 1.30. And so all of these people missed it. So it's not just me. It was at least 20 to 30, possibly even 40 people uh, that were all pulled over to the side of this line that's already massive in general um, that missed this photo op and so all of us are pretty pissed off <laughs> um, I was a little bit more calm I think I was more tired and kind of hungry at that point but other people were very irate and they were kind of angry and trying to get answers and you know, it was just a lot more stress than it had to be um, so Long story short, she talks to somebody who works for Carrie Elwes, who talks to a photographer who also takes pic who takes pictures for the convention. And um, ironically, at this point, Carrie Elwes is actually making an appearance on the main stage, which is right next to where the booth is at. So we're all kind of like watching and staring, or like people are jokingly saying, we should rush the stage or do something dumb like that. And I'm like, don't be stupid. <laughs> you want to get a picture with him. You don't want to get arrested. <laughs> so... Basically, what ends up happening is the guy that works for Carrie and the photographer basically go and talk to Carrie Elwes as soon as he's done with his interview on the main stage, and they he they've all you know, he's agreed and they've all agreed that they will allow all of us to basically get our picture taken because he's got time because I don't believe he had anything else scheduled in his agenda or whatever, and so and I'm I'm assuming he wants to make sure that he looks good. Uh, or is actually shown as a good person. So he, you know, they all basically said, we're gonna go take your picture. Just we follow us over to the photo area and we'll take care of you guys. It's like, all right. So we all hover over there, all like 30 plus whatever of us in like a straight line-ish because people are trying to actually sneak in front of me and whatever. I'm like, I, we're all gonna get our picture. <laughs> I'm, I'm at, at this point, I'm like, You're, don't, I don't wanna rush. Um, we all get into a line, we all are able to get our tickets that actually says like photo op with Carrie Elwes for Saturday only. Um, and then we go in, we go in and it's, it's you know, if, 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 I, if, if you've ever been to a convention where there's a photo op with a celebrity, um, especially a larger scale celebrity, so someone that's not like as famous, like comparing, um, you know, the Power Rangers to a movie star type of thing. Because the Power Rangers all had their own table, and so you can just basically walk up and just say hi to them and take pictures. Whereas Carrie Elwes and other people, they had to have a setup and stuff because their lines were going to be much, much longer. So that's basically the difference. Um, but we all go there, and it's quick. It's like you literally, like, the celebrity stands there, 
and you just come up next to them, um, you take a picture, you shake their hand or hug them, and then you get you leave. Like you can't have a conversation, they can't sign anything for you, it's a photo op, like straight up, like you go up and that's it. Um, in my photo op, I, be, I briefly said, can you have, have take a picture with me? And he said, as you wish. And that made my day, I was totally fine with that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> because that's literally what Wesley says, in The Princess Bride. That's his iconic line. And he actually has a best-selling novel titled As You Wish, and it's talking about, you know, like kind of like an autobiography of sorts. Um, we pose, take a picture, uh, I hug him, and he says, God, you know, God bless you, and farewell, and I, you know, I wave by him, that's it. And our photo op is done, like, <laughs> instant. And then I, I'm able to pick up the picture, and I got my picture with Carrie Elwood. So this is photographic proof. Uh, that I got my picture with him, so um, I'm pretty happy uh, that despite everything that had already happened during the day, I was at least able to get my picture because I paid for it, and I literally paid for it. Like I, you know, it cost me like forty bucks, and I had to wait in you know hours of lines, so uh, that was that was my thing. So uh, sorry, I. It, this was supposed to be an unboxing video, but it turned into kind of like a half vlog, half unboxing, half vent, or whatever percentage, or whatever. But now we're gonna get into the box. So after all of that, I was able to roam around, and uh, Loot Crate was, of course, in uh, the exhibit hall. And I wanted, you know, I was like, oh, do they have an exclusive crate like they did for WonderCon or for Com you know, San Diego Comic Con? You know, because it is technically like a Comic Con now, so are they gonna do something? And when I get to the booth, the lady there tells me, oh, we don't have an exclusive box this time. We're trying something different. Um, it was a build your own crate. So you pay $25 at the convention and they had a shelf full of different uh, previously, uh, previously utilized items for Loot Crate um, on this shelf. Or like this like you know thing and then there's like three or four shelves and each shelf you could pick like one item to two items or something and it was all listed and basically you get a total of five items in the box for $25 so basically it's like each items five bucks in quotes um, and so from the the uh, shelves you get four items and the fifth item was an exclusive Comic-Con LA Comic-Con t-shirt with Stanley it's like a Stanley Comic-Con t-shirt like like you could only get it at the convention so I was like you know what sure let's do it why not you know I support Loot Crate and so many other things why not try this out so I went in and I picked the four items that I wanted from the little shelfy thing and then paid for my $25 and got my shirt and this is what I got these were the generic size Loot Crate boxes that they had so these are like kind of their default sized boxes before they do any of the designs and stuff but they seal it for you. So, in case you're like giving it as a gift to someone. Um, I, I have an, I, one of the items that I actually picked, I'm probably gonna give to a friend of mine because I have it already. Actually, all these items I have already, except for the t-shirt, but I digress. So, when you open the custom box, this is what it looks like. So, the first item I got was another one of the exclusive Doc Brown uh, pop figures from the, I believe it was the Time box that we did last year uh, to celebrate the official Back to the Future Day, uh, October 21st, 2015, which is now in the past, which is weird. Um, but I wanted to get it because I figured I could sell it because I'm keeping the one that I earned that came in the actual box, but I figured I could possibly sell this to someone who actually wants it also. Uh, that was not able to get it. So, because um, it's it's freaking Doc Brown. And he's wearing the goggles and he's got the lightning and stuff. So, it's pretty amazing. So, that's cool. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Second item I got is the Hunger Games Mockingjay pin, uh, part two. Uh, I have, a, I obviously have one of these. So I'm probably going to do a, another uh, sale, like probably resell this if I can. Um, but it's just a cool pin. I mean, even if you're not a fan of Mockingjay, it's just a really cool bird pin in general. So that's why I figured, I'm like, you know what, it's small, um, but it's uh, it's still pretty dynamic and it's like the way it looks. All right, the third 
third item that I have are these Marvel, I think they're Marvel comic shoelaces. So I got a pair of these. Um, I was actually looking for the gray ones because I remember, I don't remember which box uh, these came in, but I remember there was two kinds. You could have gotten the ones with the color or the black and white ones. I was actually looking for the black and white ones because I don't have those. I have these. I have the color ones. But I couldn't find them because I'm, I'm guessing they got rid of them or they sold out or by the time I got to the booth, they are already gone. But still, like, just cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's Avengers shoelaces. Just festive in general. So, might add these to my chucks or something. Um, and then the fourth item that I chose, this is probably the item that I'm going to give to my friend, is a multi-tool, like the Batman multi-tool. So there's like a bottle opener, two different types of screwdrivers, it's a keychain, and it's just, it's the it's a bat wing, it's like metal, so it's like really hard, so if you want to use it as like a protective weapon, it works out. And I remember when I got this, I had a friend who was really jealous that I got this item, so I'm gonna see, I'm gonna try to surprise that friend um, if they remember. Uh, <laughs> Cause they're a fan of Batman and stuff, so got that for him. And now the exclusive item that I got from LA Comic Con is the Stanley T-shirt. It's a gray T-shirt, and it's got basically it's got Stan's face on it. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, and it says Stanley LA Comic Con, and the logo. It says Loot Crate exclusive right here, and it's got the LA Comic Con uh, logo which is basically the old kamikaze logo with the big octopus. Which reminds me, so funny story, um, before Stanley purchased Comic-Con, or before Stanley purchased Kamikaze, and now, now is called Comic-Con, um, Kamikaze was its own like independent convention, like a comic book convention that wanted to, uh, you know, create something in the LA area that, for people who weren't able to go to San Diego, because San Diego is very demanding, just high demand, and practically impossible to go to if you, you know, don't work for some type of company or something like that. Um, I remember the first year, because I went with my friend Terry, we actually, we went to a food truck gathering like months before and there was an ad for it and we were like, hey, let's check it out, you know, for like a day. Why not? Because it's a new convention and it seemed small at the time, which it was, but still it was fun. Anyway. Uh, I remember going and they featured like it was it was, a, it was it, it's like didn't know what identity it wanted to take so it was comic books and comics um, there was some you know anime influence uh, music and then I remember tattoo artists that was a big thing like there was an entire section for tattoo artists um, and if you got, went there to the convention and you got the Kamikaze logo. So this is the original Kamikaze logo, like no Stan Lee. It's just the octopus with the, logo, with the word Kamikaze on it. If you got the tattoo on any part of your body, you were able to go to the convention for life. That was, that was what they were saying. Like you basically, you go get the tattoo and then anytime you wanted to go to the convention, you'd basically show up at Will Call and be like, hey, like, like if you got your tat right here, you'd be like, hey, look at my tat. I get lifetime badge for all the entire weekend. Now that it's been completely purchased by Stan Lee and renamed LA Comic Con, are those tattoos still valid? If you got one, if you went to Kamikaze, the original one, and got a tattoo there, tell me, does it still work? Because that would suck if it didn't. Because I was actually just thinking that on the train coming back from the con, like, what happened? You know? Like, what happened to those people that got the tattoo? Did they, like, just get it laser removed? Or are they trying to use that free badge thing that was promised to them way back when? So, I don't know. That It, it was just a random thought. But anyway, um, <clears throat> let me see. There's another card in the box I just noticed. Uh, it just says, let Loot Crate do the shopping for you. Oh, and it has... Uh, discount code if you want to subscribe to Loot Crate, which is useless for me. But if anyone, you, any one of you out there 
want to subscribe to Loot Crate, you can use their little code and save 12%, and then they have their little plans here. So, um, but yeah, that was all that was in the custom crate. I don't know if that's going to be a future thing they're going to do, uh, you know, from now on. Like, is that going to be an option? I mean, it makes sense. It's kind of cool, uh, especially if you're trying to get a gift for somebody and you don't want to just give them some random box with a theme that you don't know if they're going to like what you get. This way, you're able to pick and choose the items based on what's available on like their website or something, and then make them a box for yourself. So, that's cool. Uh, but if you liked Loot Crate in general, um, I'll go ahead and put uh, details about that and how you can subscribe yourself in the description below. I'll also put a link to LA Comic Con. Um, it's kind of cool to like you know go through it in case you're interested in going next year. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I actually have a couple things that have not shown up for the month of October. Uh, my 1UP box, which basically got sent to other places in the United States for some random reason, and then back. So I sh hopefully will be getting it by Halloween. Um, same thing with my loot wear, uh, the wearable, so I get the wearable and the socks, so those haven't shown up yet. Again, hopefully they show up by Halloween, but otherwise I'm gonna, I might be doing some October filming in November. We'll see. Uh, but that's it for me. Uh, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching, and have a great night.